can hear her heartbeat a thousand miles. Heaven's open every time she smiles. When I come to her, it's where I belong. Yet I'm running to her. She give me love and love and love and love Crazy love She give me love and love and love Crazy love She's got a fine sense of humor When I'm feeling low down When I come to her When the sun goes down
there's so many songs that I that I I could have played. Um, the list is endless. The, the list is an amazing. It's absolutely amazing. And um, the class is in session. Yes, uh, music night is in session today with with Mike Dalfero, this amazing um, pianist and composer who has made so many, so many songs, so such amazing music uh, in his lifetime. And um, he's graced us on Music Nights. An invite, uh, I think we sent to him, I think a month ago. Uh, so today uh, we have the pleasure of actually being with him on Music Nights. So the first song that I played uh, is a song that was actually released this year. Uh, this year, uh, and this one is Jeremy Oliver with uh, with our guest tonight, Mike Donferro. Crazy love, amazing, amazing, lovely song. And then after that, I played another another rendition uh, from Mike Donferro. Uh, what a wonderful world! Oh, amazing on the pianos there. Yeah, oh, amazing, totally. So thank you for coming through. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for being with us on Music Night uh, on, this, on this Wednesday evening. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Uh, before I welcome our guest and uh, before I give him the mic, uh, let's give the mic to the co-host, the co-host of, of the space, uh, Lloyd, this good friend of mine, who's also the host of, of the Top of the Morning Space and also the host of the Deep House Space, which happens every Friday. Lloyd, um, good evening, Incha. How are you doing? Yo yo, how's it? I'm I'm very calm, I'm very very laid back. I've been listening to this music for for quite a while since I've been home. Uh, but how are you doing? I'm okay. I'm okay. A bit tired. Uh, I was falling asleep before the space. <laughs> but yeah, we're here. We're here. Nah, nah. I good thing you didn't sleep over. Uh, the time that they started, but you are here. Shout out, brother. Um, without further ado, um, the renowned composer, the renowned um, pianist, Mike Del Ferro. Good evening, uh, Mr. Mr. Mike Del Ferro. Good evening, Voxman. Good evening, Lloyd. Good evening, everybody. How are you doing? We are. Um, we are well. It's quite. Yeah. It's quite. Uh, it's quite cold this side of the world. Um, how how's things your side? Um, it's getting a little colder, but we did have uh, um, uh, very hot days here. Um, actually, unusual for August. I mean, we're still in the summer, of course, but uh, yeah. Um, but usually September, it starts dropping the temperature, and then mid October, uh, then the the. Uh, yeah, then the autumn fall is at our doorstep, and then, and then, you are looking at um, spring, right, in South Africa or in the southern hemisphere, which is great. So you, you got you got something to look forward to, actually, weather wise. Yeah, yeah, we we we, we do, but I, I I mean, where I stay, it's normally it is always sunny. Uh, I know it's quite quite warm, but uh, the last couple of days, this the weather has just changed. But yeah, we're looking forward to spring and and the festivities that come with spring. I mean, yes. so many concerts and uh, and sightseeing and things just opening up. Yeah. But thanks thanks again for joining us and for coming through. Well, thank you for inviting me on this uh, wonderful um, space. I have been following you now for, you, you now for like a month. Occasionally, I, I pop in and. I hear so many uh, great people talking about music, sharing music, sharing a lot of love. And uh, yeah, and the way you initiated and hosted and coordinate the whole thing, uh, I just want to, yeah, my, my deepest respect is really great. And also the taste, you know, so many people with great taste for music in this, in this space. It's really wonderful and versatile music and varying from, you know, even free jazz, uh, I love that, you know, this, this, this open-minded uh, approach to music. So uh, I, I appreciate it a lot. Really great. No, thank you so much. Thanks for, thanks for the love. Thanks for the flowers. Um, <laughs> yeah. I think this, this music thing is a part of our life, and it's always been. 
so we we just giving it an extra edge. Uh, we giving it an extra um, an extra lunch, I could say, uh, just for it to be uh, a part of, of our lives a bit more. And and more importantly, we're just getting to to learn more about ourselves and 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 our favorite people, uh, musicians, uh, in the music industry. So from my side, I totally love it. Um, it's quite refreshing. And the conversations, as you say, that we have, um, it's, it's, it's amazing. It's, it's amazing. And it makes you, it makes you just a, a better person each and every day. Yeah. Yeah. Because you're, you're surrounded by like-minded people. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, it's wonderful. No, I really appreciate it. Whenever I get a chance, I'm, uh, I'm there listening. And uh, yeah. And, and you're, freak, you're, you're, you're on there frequently, eh? almost, like daily almost, I think. <laughs> Huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever um, sleep? Uh, I, I think last week I even shared that um, I've lost so many, uh, lost so many opportunities of uh, let's have a bry later, let's let's go yeah. out for drinks after work. I've lost so many of those. Uh, I think I've even lost friends because of spaces. But um, it's not really daily, but yeah, this week has been crazy. But it's 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 there. It's there. I don't quite frequently these days. It's yeah. there. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, I and yeah, I just yeah. and I just hope that and 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 pray that uh, when the fruits, um, when the vine uh, is 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 well to 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 be matured, it's a beautiful vine. So that's that's what I hope at the end of the day that uh, all of this. Uh, comes comes with the rewards um, at some point, and and it's just also just being consistent, and um, and just doing it with love and passion. Yeah, yeah, but but it's true what you say. If if you're if you're on these platforms, and you want to um, reach more people, you have to be very consistent, and determined to 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 make it happen, and that's what you do. So, uh, I'm I'm sure it's gonna it's gonna bring you a lot of good stuff in the future. Keep doing this. I'm pretty sure. So uh, yeah. Thank you, yeah. Mike. Thank you. It has to. It has to. Definitely. Yeah. Despite missing out on Bryce in South Africa. <laughs> yeah. That's I absolutely. I absolutely. Uh, am. I hear you. I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'm even missing out on on on, on restaurant specials uh, during the week because I'm always on spaces during the week. <laughs> but yeah. Um, yeah. but it's but it's but it's cool. But it's cool. Yeah, 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 yeah. Wonderful. Thanks for the thanks for the soft way that we started the space. Uh, it never it never starts like this. It never starts like this ever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, it's uh, yeah. And what would you like to do? Would you like to talk? Would you like me to play? What what what's what what would you like to do? Can you can you hear me well actually? Is, how's the sound quality? Perfectly. Perfectly. Okay. So. Okay. Yeah. All right. So uh I think yeah. what we can do, Mike, um, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk, and then I think perhaps every uh, 15 minutes or so, 20 minutes, uh, we'll give you some time to, to play uh, something live for us. Um, yeah, I think that would be cool uh, for the next uh, an hour and 45 minutes or so. I think that that would be cool. Yeah, perfect. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what I also had in mind, like a two-hour something. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. Great. Yeah. No yeah. problem. No problem. Well, yeah. That's how we always do it. I mean, we always keep it. We always try to keep it two hours uh, and then play some music now and then. But today we have a pleasure of you actually playing uh, live for us, just like you did on Jazz Sunday Request uh, four weeks ago. Yeah, that was, yeah. That was, that was amazing. Um, thank you for that again. Thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure. I, I happen to be online and... How how did it happen? I think to Bobby or to the piano adventures or I don't know how I got um, how I got on the space, but it turned out to be a beautiful event and uh, and also uh, sharing my love for South Africa, where I've been so many times, over forty times. This actually become my second home over the years, and after this COVID thing, I cannot wait to uh, fly down again. I hope maybe in the fall or at least. Uh, early next year and collaborate with all these beautiful artists I know there and uh, yeah so uh, I'm, I'm glad to uh, to uh, to be here actually it's really wonderful 
Thank you yeah. so much, Chick. Thank you so much, yeah. Mike. And I think uh, where we can actually start it from, um, just just uh, you by saying um, how perhaps in in recent times we haven't been able to really travel the world, um, I mean, because of the pandemic and so and so. Um, how has life been for for Mike uh, Delfer or someone who 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 tours the world so much and and, and plays and plays music live? How has it been after the pandemic? I mean, it did so many bad things to so many people, but it also has so many positives, I believe. But how is your life after the pandemic? Thank yeah. You. Well, first of all, I, you know, I kind of, well, thank God uh, I didn't get it. And, uh, and my loved ones around me were also, some had it, but they were not seriously affected by uh, the thing itself, you know, the Corona thing itself. So... I'm grateful for that because I know that's not the case with many people. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, also, to be honest, um, I have a sister-in-law and she is, uh, she's handicapped. She has Down syndrome and she's very vulnerable. So when the whole thing started, uh, she stayed with us and we were, we were really very, very careful with, uh, you know, even, you know, doing shopping online and all of that. So, uh, so I was really stuck at home. And um, of course, it's true. I'm a very frequent traveler. You know, I travel to an average of 15, 15 to 20 countries every year. So that was quite a, a challenge. But um, what I did, first of all, I, I, um, I took the opportunity to, to, to have some quality time with the family, which is great and important. Of course, but also uh, musically, what happened? The thing was that um, um, even you know everybody blames the pandemic, but what I've noticed in the last years with live music, that's and that's also in a way the, the, I think the downside of the internet. Um, it's 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 not always easy to draw people to concerts, but that was already something I noticed uh, before the pandemic and. Um, what I did, for instance, I remember I was in Japan and, you know, and I, I just put out my phone and put it on a stand and uh, I streamed the concert on Facebook, just live when I was playing there. And so many people watched it. And I got so many comments and then I realized, well, you know, uh, I have to, this, this live streaming thing is going to be uh, something um, in the future because... You know, it's like if you can beat them, you must join them. I mean, I'm, I love the internet, but like I said, you know, in terms of drawing people to concerts, I, th I find it sometimes a challenge. And um, so, so I already it was already on my mind like I should be doing this, this this live streaming thing. I should do this more often. But of course, I was too busy and blah blah blah. And then and then the pandemic pandemic happened, and we were in the, in the lockdown started and then i thought okay so now i have no excuse i'm going to be stuck at home like everybody for a couple of months at least so um this is the time to go live streaming so i i went on youtube through tutorials uh like how to live stream i i i, I mean I, I know some things about technique but i really had to kind of with this thing start from scratch and uh, i bought a couple of microphones uh, some software everything you know a light, a, uh, some lights and all of that. And I just started streaming every day from home on Facebook, on YouTube, and, um, and also, on, also on, what was it called? Periscope, I think, on Twitter. And, um, uh, you know, in the beginning, I had a lot of technical failures and people would help me out on, you know, right on the spot, like, no, uh, you know. And, and I learned a lot uh, technically and actually, yeah, uh, started loving it and, and then what happened people started sharing it especially on Facebook and I gained so many new followers like thousands of people discovering my music and uh, and that really motivated me so in the beginning of the pandemic I was literally live streaming seven days a week and um, and and um, and then during the day of course next to spending time with the family I uh, you know, I started writing music, things I had needed to do for years, but I never was able to because of all the traveling. Because traveling is great, but um, it also uh, stops the daily stuff which you need to do at home, especially as a pianist, because you cannot practice in hotel rooms, stuff like that. So, um, 
Yeah, in that sense, it, it, it brought me a lot of uh, great things. And I learned a lot on, on the technical side. In fact, sometimes uh, people even sometimes hire me as a technician, which I would never have envisioned uh, to, to stream live because I know how it works with the, with the cameras and the multicam and also what's, you know, how music should be um, registered in the proper way. You know, that it's not if someone is playing a piano solo, you're, you're filming the the foot of the drummer or something like that, you know, there's things like that. So, yeah, it, it really uh, brought me a lot of great things and, um, uh, and it kept me positive and also stay in touch with the audience uh, rather than uh, watching Netflix all day being depressed because uh, we, we couldn't play anymore. And uh, so that's how I basically uh, went through the pandemic. And uh, so I, I experienced it uh, also... Uh, it's a very positive thing. Also, like leading a regular life, you know, that, that's also nice. I was really actually well rested for, for, for a change. So that, that's also uh, something I really, uh, yeah. So that's the positive side uh, to it, actually. That's how I turn it into something positive, at least for myself. Oh, lovely. And 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 as a um, as an artist as a pianist, uh, you did mention that uh, you need uh, you you need some practice time. You need to be um, you need to be practicing and actually being on on on, on the piano, learning it as, as as frequent as possible. Do you feel perhaps um, has your has has your life your career perhaps changed after the pandemic too? Have you become uh, better in, in, in certain in specific uh, perhaps ways besides the fact that you now you are able to 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 be this technical man uh, this te technical person uh, with your live streams but did a few things perhaps when you were spending so much time alone or spending so much time at home did those things improve uh, some of your characteristics as an artist perhaps yeah because um, um... I play a lot with bands, you know, usually, and now I had to, I, I had to really work seriously on my solo piano playing. And for a pianist, uh, especially with, when you're like jazz, like you know, the left hand is something to be developed, you know, because you have to, you have to also be the rhythm section at the same time. And uh, yeah, it was a great opportunity to work on my left hand, which, which actually, yeah, improved. Um, quite a lot. I'm still not satisfied. I'll never be. <laughs> but but um, you know that that's like a, t a musical aspect in my, in my playing, which really, which really changed. Yeah, uh, that's um, and yeah. What else? I, I uh, and I got to learn a lot of new songs. Of course, you know because I simply had more time to do it. So like I said, you know the the. The downside of being a pianist is, is two things. When you travel, it's hard to get access to pianos. You know, so forget about practicing and writing music uh, uh, when you're on the road. And the other thing, of course, is um, sometimes pianos can be really challenging. You know, that uh, wherever you go. I mean, uh, now now I'm I'm in the stage and playing in venues where it's mostly fine, but still I'm surprised. Like how bad the quality of your instrument can be and you have no control over that and there is nothing you can do on, 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 when, you, when you arrive there because the piano is there and you have to play in a couple of hours and that's what you have to deal with and playing my Yamaha which I love a lot my, my, I have a, an older um, Yamaha grand piano at home and uh, being able to play that all the time that was also kind of something I really enjoyed I even fell in love more with my own piano things like that Great to hear that. Great stuff. I think it's always lovely for, 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 for anyone. For anyone. I, I mean, I'm also one person that I've played drums, and um, I think you need to be in love with these instruments um, to make them dwell into into your into your life. I miss them though. Actually, I miss playing drums. Yeah, yeah because what, what 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 do you play yourself? No, I used to play drums, um, yeah. but but I stopped. So I stopped and I moved to, to Cape Town. And then um, and now I just DJ. So I just DJ now. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's not yeah. a thing that I do anymore. 
Do you miss it, the drumming? Totally, totally, totally. Yeah. yeah. Totally. So it's something I used to do when I was back home. Uh, it, was, it was a lovely hobby. It was an amazing one because it makes you, makes you experience so many things. Um, amongst others, just people, people and audiences. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was lovely. Yeah. Talking, talking yeah. about people and, and, and audiences, um, from your side, Mike, how do you cope uh, with dealing um, with this disinterested or, or disrespectful audiences? And as someone who tours the world and performs to like thousands and thousands of people, how do you deal with that? Yeah. Um, well... Um, yeah, you know, I'm, I'm in a stage now that fortunately people who come to listen to, to my music, to my concerts, you know, they're, they, they, they know what to expect. You know, it's, it's, you know, jazz is a niche, but worldwide it's quite big. Also, and actually also thanks to the internet, that's not a great aspect again about the internet. Um, uh, and yeah, disrespectful audiences, that's something... Um, it still can happen, you know. Nowadays, when it happens, it's you. It's usually because of uh, uh, bad marketing or like sending out the the the, the, uh, the, bad, the, the wrong message to uh, in, in 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 marketing terms, you know, uh, and that it that it that it draws the wrong audience. Well, the wrong audience. I don't. I don't I don't mean it like that, but you know what I mean. Not the audience which likes this music, my music, to, to the concerts. And um, yeah, I mean, and it still happens like, you know, you're playing at some venues where it's like more like, like it can be like a club or, you know, when you're playing concert halls and theaters and all of that, you know, people are, are silent. But sometimes when you're playing clubs, sometimes people can be talkative. And um, I find it, not easy to be honest to just go and grab the mic and go like can you please keep quiet you know especially being the artist so i would ask like the 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 mc or the the promoter or whoever to say to say look can you please ask these people to uh to to to, to be quiet because it's not only uh because of the of, of for me as being the artist or or the people on stage but also it's disrespectful for for the audience who actually comes out to listen to, to the music, you know, it's, it's, so uh, um, that's how I, I try to deal with it. I, I've been in situations, also, and it can happen, you know, it can happen tomorrow too. Uh, I mean, that, 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 that I do grab the mic and go like, hey, please, you know, um, uh, can you please, uh, well, in, in, in a polite way, but basically I say, can you please shut up, you know, and um, yeah. Um, but... Yeah, so, so, sometimes it happens, but fortunately, lately, it, for me, for, at least, it's, it's very rare. But it, 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 is, it, it can be frustrating sometimes. Yeah. So, I, can, yeah. I, can, yeah. I can definitely attest to that. Yeah, it can be. It can yeah. be. And, and I guess as a musician, you have to adapt and, uh, and, just, and just quickly um, change the gear uh, in, into whatever circumstance that you're facing. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and it's also you know, and that's also what why I like I, I like I really like your question because it's always good, you know, um, you know, it's a great life. It's great to travel and make a living with playing and all of that. But um, it's it's you know there are also sometimes some, some really challenges sometimes, you know, uh, like you see, you know like this respectful audiences, uh, bad pianos, fatigue. Um, uh, People not showing up, um, um, uh, yeah, travel, traveling problems, missing flights and being late, and you know, it's it, it's um, it, it's not always as romantic as as it appears. You know, that, that's I think that I mean that's in every profession, of course, but uh, yeah, it's not uh, it, it's not always the romantic. Uh, someone recently told me, yeah, you're living the dream, and I thought, well, of course, it is great. I'm very I'm incredibly grateful for this gift and that I'd be able to travel the world and share my love for music with um, audiences all over the world and also collaborate with all these cultures. I think I love to do, but it's not always uh, that romantic or, that, or yeah, it can be, it can be challenging. You know. 
Absolutely, absolutely. Um, I'll ask this question, and then I think you can get ready on your side, perhaps, to 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 to, to give us a number. Is that okay oh. with you, Mike? Yeah, 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 yeah. Sure, sure. Let me, uh, no, let after me... this one. So I'm going to okay, ask okay. another yeah. one, and then, and then oh, sure. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. You, you can okay. go ahead. Yeah. Um, I know I just asked about um, fans and audiences, uh, but also regarding perhaps um, working, and you work so much with, with musicians um, and artists. Um, I mean, could you describe uh, also a time when you worked with a difficult musician and how you also worked around that? And uh, how, how, what did you learn from that? <laughs> oh, this is... a. Uh... I love this question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, that's. Um, oh, yeah. How, how can I how, how can I uh, describe this and answer this in, 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 in a good way? First of all, now, nowadays, um, I stopped working with difficult people when I when I notice it, you know, or after a first experience. And people, uh, in my opinion, misbehave. Then I, sh- I just stop working with them, no matter how great they are. I, I that that it's not interesting to me anymore. I really, I, w- I just want to work with beautiful people. And fortunately, most of the people I work with are beautiful. So that's that's not the problem. But um, yeah, you know, sometimes, especially when they're like a bit, little bit more known. Um, well, you know. You know what's ironically, in my experience, um, I've worked f- with some really incredible people. Eh? Uh, uh, with Toots Tielemans, a harmonica player, for, for 10 years. Uh, I've worked with Jack Dijonette, with Randy Brecker, uh, with Brentford Marsalis. And these people are all really, really nice. You know, they, they care about one thing, and that's bringing the music to the highest possible level. And in my experience, it's more like uh, the, the lesser gods, people are gods, the, the, the more frustrated people who tend to uh, get this attitude, diva behavior. And, I, I, and, and once you see and, and notice it, it's mostly out of frustration or insecurity and things like that, then I'm, you know, then I, I can handle it better for some reason because I go like, well, I actually sometimes feel sorry for them. Uh, actually, someone so known in South Africa who unfortunately uh, passed away last year. Like I, I worked a couple of times with Sibongile Kumalo. She was fantastic and also such a beautiful human being. And this woman was just like, you know, into the music. She wanted to, to, to take the music to the highest possible level, which she did in an incredible way, being so versatile. And, uh, and she was a total sweetheart to work with. Uh, but sometimes, you know, I don't want to mention names. You, you encounter people, who, yeah, and like I said, they're insecure, or and they and then they put it out on on the band or try, you know, and and, and yeah. Um, and, and what can you do? Look at the moment itself. You know, the show must go on. You know, and I and, and because to me, the most important thing is always the audience. You know. Every single person who comes out, who makes the effort to come out and listen to your music, you know, who buy a ticket, uh, probably have to park their cars, some um, their car, maybe they, they even go and have dinner. They easily spend like, I don't know, $50, euros, whatever, uh, on listening to you. I have a deep respect for anyone who comes out to listen, especially in these times where where the internet is so competitive. And that's for me the most important thing. So even if, if I'm in a situation where I have to deal on stage with people um, I'm not always uh, too crazy about, then I will uh, always think like the audience comes first. And uh, yeah, but, but like I said, you know, um, I really stopped working with, with difficult people. And because I, I, you know, I'm in a stage now that I, yeah, in a way that I, it's not that I don't need to, but I just don't want that anymore. I've been around for uh, over 30 years now, playing professionally all over the world. And there are so many beautiful people to work with. Yeah, why, why deal with uh, with people who are, who are challenging? 
you know. And sometimes I feel sorry for them, eh? because, you know, especially in a lot of artists, you know, with all the anxiety going on and, and not be able to canalize it in such a way that you can deal with it yourself. I also feel sorry for a lot of people, but yeah, that's unfortunately how it is. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And just before you play, and I think yeah. um, these, these situations also, um, I mean, it reveals the ability of one to maintain um, professional relationships. It also um, it, it shows your ways of, of, of conflict resolution and, and, and stuff and just makes you that kind of a person and just strengthens your, your character. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yes, of course. You know, I mean, challenges are the best way to, to grow and, and to improve. That, that, that's, that's very true. That's very true. But, uh, yeah, you know, and look, there are also, it depends, you know, I mean, um, it can be, look, if people misbehave on stage in front of an audience, that I find, find really bad. But sometimes you have to, yeah, you're dealing with other stuff, like you, you have a band and the musicians or someone or a couple, you know, they, 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 they didn't prepare the music and you're there with the rehearsal, you know, always lack of time and losing time on people who haven't, you know, don't have their act together, things like that. You know, there are also more subtle things, which, uh, um, you know, I can also say it in another way. Uh, I think, you know, um, a career in music, but in any field is 200%. It's 100% being great in what you're doing. And the other 100% is mentality. It's 200%. And... If, um, if a great artist does not work, is not being, because that's the thing, for you know, if you have this reputation, people stop calling you. If a great artist is not working, it's 99% because of a mentality problem. And that can be small mentality, you know, like we always are late or whatever, or, 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 or act, you know, be a diva or whatever, it doesn't matter, but there is always, 99% of the cases, it's because of a mentality problem. So if, 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 you're, if, you, if your reputation is not uh, is affected by, by your behavior, yeah, then people stop calling you and you can be a, a fantastic uh, artist, but it's still, you know, people will uh, stop calling you. And that's, uh, yeah, so that's, yeah, 100% uh, artistry, 100% mentality. That's how it, uh, that's the thing. I like that, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a nice uh, applause. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Definitely deserve them, definitely. But Mike, um, this is your time uh, where you can give us a wonderful piece, please, from your side. And uh, just also welcome everyone who just joined us. Uh, our guest tonight is Mike Del Ferro. And um, we have the opportunity and the honor of, of him actually playing live for us, uh, which is going to be one of the greatest things I think we've been doing on Spaces. Uh, so thanks for joining. Thanks for coming through. Uh, we've just clocked 40 minutes in the space. So uh, we've still got another uh, just over an hour or so just with our guest. So please enjoy and enjoy the, the conversations as, as well as the music. Mike, uh, the platform is yours. Please go ahead. Yes. Um, let me quickly... Do you hear the piano? How's the sound out there? It's fine? All good. All good. All right. Okay. Um, I'm going to play um, a piece for you by, uh, by a Dutch composer. Um, with a, his name is... Um, Rohir van Otterlo, and uh, he passed away many years ago, and he was a fantastic uh, composer, conductor, arranger, and this piece um, actually comes from a soundtrack from a movie, an iconic Dutch movie entitled uh, Turkish Delight, and here, here in the Netherlands it's like really iconic. And, 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 and the soundtrack is beautiful. And this is uh, uh, one of those pieces. It's called The Misty Red Beast.
Lovely, lovely, absolutely, um, absolutely amazing, Mike. Um, thank you, thank you for that. Thank you for that. Uh, before I just carry on, could you just share more about uh, uh, the piece that you played? Um, even even the artist, you said um, he's no more. Could you just share a bit more about them, please? Thank you. Yeah, 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 sure. Um, um, uh, well, actually, um, this artist, he, he was the composer of, of this piece. He wrote um, soundtracks for uh, actually, actually uh, great Dutch movies. We do have a kind of a movie culture here in the Netherlands, despite being such a, a small uh, country. And um, uh, but he was he, he was not like um, well wh when he was on stage, he was the conductor of the orchestra, and uh, but he had great positions uh, executing his music. And one of them is someone I, I mentioned before, whom I played with for many years. That was the iconic. Uh, harmonica player Toot Stielemans. He actually plays on that soundtrack. And um, uh, yeah, I mean, it's, you, you can also, uh, it, it's all, I mean, most of the titles are in, in Dutch, but it's, um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's really a, a nice um, example of um, uh, Dutch, uh, yeah, it's a great Dutch, Dutch culture in terms of uh, uh, soundtrack, soundtracks, Dutch soundtracks. And uh, since I'm doing a tribute to Toots Tielemans, uh, because uh, this year, 2022, marks his uh, 100th anniversary. Uh, he was born in 1922 and he died six years ago, actually in August, age 94. And, uh, and I'm doing this Toots tribute worldwide and I'll keep, and it actually it's quite successful and I'll be, I'll continue this, uh, this tribute also in 2023. Actually, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm also in touch with uh, the, the Joy of Jazz Festival and the Cape Town to see if um, they would be interested to bring it to South Africa, uh, honoring this great man, who, who, uh, Toots Tielemans, who created so much incredible music. So uh, I hope it's going to work out. Oh, that would be amazing! That would be amazing to see you here. Um, I mean, I think I think the Cape Town Jazz should be back definitely next year. Uh, it should be back. Uh, they should actually tell us soon. And the Joe of Jazz, I actually saw um, an advert. Uh, they were, I think, the today or something. They were showing us the artists that are actually going to be performing. So um, yeah, it would be lovely to see you down here. Please, please, yeah, please yeah, make yeah, it happen. Yeah. Yeah, I think Joy of Jazz, usually t I think it takes place in September, but I, if I'm not mistaken, they moved it to November. If I'm not, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that's what I, that's what I think. Well, otherwise, uh, so, or maybe, yeah. So, uh, no, I'm pretty sure I'll be, I'll be uh, coming down in 2023. And, uh, yeah. And, uh, and I, I already played that uh, Cape Town Festival a couple of times. Actually, one time with uh, Sibongila also, Kumalo. And um, so uh, I know them pretty well, the people from uh, ESP Radio and uh, uh, that tribe there. And I know them very well. So, uh, yeah, I hope it's going to work out. I would love to, to, to come back and also collaborate with my friend, uh, well, my brother, uh, uh, Mbuzo Kosa, who is this wonderful... I don't know if, if you know Mbuzo, he is, um, I actually told him uh, an hour ago I would be on, on, on this space, uh, but he, then he wrote me that he, uh, he deleted Twitter from his phone already a while ago, unfortunately. He's, more, he's really active on Instagram. You know, he's a fantastic uh, human being. Uh, I recorded two albums with him, uh, one with my trio and one with, um, um, uh, um, with his choir. I went to, uh, to KwaZulu Natal, to, uh, to Durban, we recorded it there, and I was f fully immersed uh, with wonderful people in the whole Zulu Koza tradition, and I've, 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 I've felt very privileged to be able to, to, to be in that, those surroundings for a week, creating music and recording, and uh, learning so much, and Mbuzo is really great, because he's, you know, he's really fighting to... to to, to preserve that, that whole beautiful culture. And he's doing a great job there. He's actually working on building a center uh, dedicated to uh, 
the whole culture there. And um, he moved back to Eshoe. And, yeah, he's, and, uh, and every time I, I fly down, we, we do a couple of concerts together. And he's just like an amazing singer who, who can do anything. You, you play any chord, whatever you do, you know, he's totally um, self-taught totally intuitive. Whatever you play, you'll sing something beautiful on top of it. So uh, we actually uh, recorded this album called the Johannesburg Sessions. So you can uh, you can find it on Spotify and, you know, and all the other uh, and Apple Music and all the other digital platforms. If you would be interested, it's uh, he's a fantastic artist. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah uh, he definitely is. Uh, I mean, yeah. he's even collaborated with uh, with Black Coffee. So yeah, um, he's, yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's definitely amazing. Yeah, 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 he's, he's, he's wonderful. So, um, yeah, yeah, I, I, I still hope you will. I told him, man, I said, in Buzo, really install Twitter on your phone and uh, please hop on. So, I don't know, maybe he'll, you know, but uh, <laughs> I, I don't think he'll be here. But uh, I think he would, it would be great to have him here on, and that he also knows about this space and stuff because... He would he would be fit perfectly in uh, in this space also in the future. So uh, otherwise, I'll connect you guys. Maybe you can. Uh, yeah, I think it, yes, you know, please. He's, he's very up for for, for these kind of uh, talks and everything. And he'll just sing through the phone, and you'll be all mesmerized. So uh, yeah, please, please, please do connect us, yeah. Mike. Please I will. do connect yeah, I will, us. I will. I will. I will do that. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I think most most um, most South African artists uh, just only know Twitter as this toxic place. They haven't uh, found out about Twitter Spaces and what we do on Twitter Spaces. So um, it's still it's still it's still something that's quite new. But please yeah. please do connect. I would like would love yeah. to, to to actually talk to him and yeah. Uh, yeah. get to know him a bit more. Yeah 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 yeah. Yes, I will. Uh... I'm going to put you guys in touch. Yeah, maybe later if you can DM me, like no, no, on Instagram. That would be the best way to go. So I, I will because he's he's quite active on Instagram and Facebook. No, no, I'll I'll, uh, I'll connect you or I'll I'll, I'll, DM, I'll DM you his his WhatsApp and, and the other way around. Then you can connect because he he should be here. Really, he's, he would be. Yeah, absolutely. So, uh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, moving, 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 moving right along. Um, thanks again, man, Mike. Thanks for, for thanks for being with us. Um, yeah. and, and it's quite, and it's quite. I always say this uh, that it's, it's quite amazing. It's quite, it's it's quite grateful that uh, we have we have so many artists on our spaces, which are international, and we're not getting so many uh, of our local artists on our spaces. It's quite weird. It's quite weird, but. Um, but we are quite, we're quite honored. We're quite honored. We're quite honored, definitely. Yeah, I think it also has to do with, like, Twitter space is relatively new. I mean, you know, a lot of people do Instagram Live and Facebook and, uh, and all of that. And I think uh, uh, Twitter space is still something to be explored, actually. So, um, yeah. So but that can also be a great advantage because you're already here. So... Uh, you know, I recently heard an interview with someone uh, and, was, and this person said, yeah, well, if you want to be a YouTuber, you, st you should start 20 years ago. <laughs> so, oh, <yeah>. okay. I, <laughs> interesting. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and, and you're, you're, you're just jumped right on this. So uh, I think there's a lot to be explored here. It's great. It's a fantastic uh, way to, uh, to communicate. Yeah. No, it definitely yeah. is. Definitely is. Yeah. So, um, so Mike, please, uh, please describe for us um, the best performance uh, that you've ever given, and uh, please share with us like what was, what was, what made it so special. Thank you. <laughs> oh my God, that's that, that's a hard question because then I also need to kind of brag around myself. <laughs> myself. Um, you know, I always say the perfect. The the, the perfect gig doesn't really exist. Uh, you know, there's always stuff to, to um, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm in a stage now that I, I have self-love, you know, I know my qualities and, and what, I, what I can do and all of that. But of course, there's always the, the professional in me and the, and, the, and the artist who wants to improve. 
so I'm, I'm, I'm quite self-critical. Um, and, uh, you know, it's not like, it's not like, well, then and then at that evening in that place, I, 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 I played so amazing. But for me, um, if you are, if you get into a stage where um, you have the feeling that you're just kind of sitting behind the piano or the keyboard and uh, the music is the music and you, and you connect with something, you know, it's a little bit also a spiritual thing and you connect with it, you tap in into a certain energy and you get that feeling that the music is just playing through you, that everything is like effortless. Um, yeah, those are the, 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 the moments I really uh, uh, embrace. And uh, I had quite a few of them playing with Toots Tielemans, uh, of course, playing with great artists who also facilitate this. You know, in order to you know, you, can, you know, if you if you have a great band, and uh, which you know, I think it makes things really easy, of course, or easier. And um, uh, I remember, for instance, a concert in India. I went to India, and I collabor collaborated there with um, um, Niladri Kumar. And Niladri Kumar is a sitar player, and uh, Ravi Shankar. Uh, shortly before he passed away, you know, the most iconic uh, sitar player ever, he said uh, that uh, the future of the sitar is uh, in great hands with Niladri Kumar. Kumar. Well, that's quite a compliment. I mean, Niladri plays duets with Sakir Hussein, you know, the tabla player, and you're talking about the absolute world-class level. And he has a band, and he invited me to play. We, I went to Bombay, to Mumbai, and... Uh, and I was on stage with these Indian musicians uh, who are so disciplined and that level. And I was just sitting on stage listening and I, was, and I thought by myself, I just cannot believe what's going on, what's going on around me on stage. This level of playing, it's so incredible and, you know, and it really made me fly. And then I had that, 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 that moment that I thought like, well, you know, I, just the music just plays through me. I just put my hands on the keyboard and it happened. And, uh, you know, and I've got some more, uh, 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 like, like with Jack Dijonet playing a concert in Taiwan, in Taipei, I experienced this, um, um, uh, yeah, on several occasions. And, uh, but it's that feeling like the music plays through you that, you, that it really becomes like an effortless thing and that you're just flying and you go like, wow, is that me? That kind of thing, you know? And of course, it's a challenge to, to get into that, that, um, that, that space, so to speak, every time. But for some reason, at least speak for myself, it's, it, it doesn't always work. I don't know why, you know, it can be, again, the circumstances... Uh, but but yeah. But uh, when I'm in that stage, that then I that's that's the greatest um, space to be in musically on the spot. That everything just happens. Yeah. So. And and a, a counter a, a counter question to to that uh, to my previous question also. Wow. Uh, I mean you've 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 played in so many um, places around the world, but which one? Um, which one stands out to you that you have attended, not played at, uh, which year, which musical event or concert that they have you attended, and and this one stuck out of all of out of all of them. Oh, I was, for instance, um, I mean, you know, I I could talk about this for hours, so I have to <laughs> give you, but you know what, what what just pops up now is like I was in Mali in West Africa, and. Um, I played there at the festival, you know, unfortunately now it's unsafe, but at the time it was, it was fine. And uh, then um, Salif Keita was performing there. Um, and Salif um, uh, is a big, um, he's a big activist, um, next to being an incredible artist, because he, he really fights for uh, uh, the albino people being uh, recognized, eh, because that's a big problem. And what he did as a statement, he brought a choir with 50 um, albino singers. So this choir, so yeah, the setting was like, like this, this old like uh, kind of a Mississippi riverboat 
on a river in Mali, you know, with the desert and the sun going down and all these people dressed in these beautiful colors. And then it was him with this amazing band and then 50 people, all Albinos, uh, um, uh, uh, singing this, his beautiful music, you know. And I was just like, like, well, I was just like moved to tears, you know. I, I, I just, you know, I, there was a lot of Kleenex, that concert. You know, th those are moments I go like, oh man, it's so, I wish the whole world would have experienced this. And there was not the time that you just pull out an iPhone and go live, you know, but, but okay, it's a memory I keep for myself, you know, and it's, that, that's like a very memorable uh, moment for me. Uh, but also like, um, but I cannot, yeah, that, that, that was really something really, uh, an amazing experience on, on a, on a spiritual level, on everything, you know. But of course, you can also go to a, a club here in Amsterdam and experience something incredible, something you don't you don't expect. I re, or, and uh, uh, I went to the North Sea Jazz Festival last month in July, and then I saw uh, uh, Gonzalo Rubalcaba, the Cuban pianist, which I find, uh, to me, you know, I mean. I, I I don't really like this, but if if I would have to mention a hero, that, that's a hero for me, and such an incredible pianist, you know. Um, and also Arkady Volodos, he is a classical pianist, a Russian classical pianist, and he was playing here at the Concertgebouw, which is our national um, concert hall, famous for its its acoustics, really a classical concert, and it was so mesmerizing that I went home. And I just stared at the ceiling all night, like I, I just cannot believe what I heard tonight. So, uh, yeah, there was a lot uh, I experienced there, which is so inspiring. So, uh, but I, I, I can have I have so many examples. I, I could talk about this for hours. But, uh, yeah, but uh, those are uh, um, a couple of very um, a couple of incredible moments, which just pop up now. <laughs> yeah. No, thank you, thank you, Mike. You know, I, I, I can tell that. I can tell. We can go, we can go on and on. Oh but yeah. Yes, our time is, is is quite limited. So thanks for sharing that. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Um, it's it's an hour um, and five minutes into the space. Welcome everyone. It's nine o'clock um, in Cape Town. It's nine o'clock. Uh, probably nine o'clock in Joburg too. And and Mike, uh, I think it's also nine o'clock on your side, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This time of the year, this, where yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we share yeah. the same time zone. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Um, I wanted to bring in Lloyd on this one. Uh, my good friend here hasn't said anything. Lloyd, um, anything to to add? Or to share today? Oh yes, yes, yes. I get. I mean, I'm listening to you. You're asking questions. I'm like, let me, let me just keep quiet, you know. But yeah, I'm, I, I want to know, Mike, what made you pursue career in music? Um, knowing that um, having to make it in this in this industry is very sketchy. What 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 convinced you to actually pursue a career in music? Uh, the, oh, that's a very simple uh, simple answer. Just. The love, the love for music, despite all the challenges. It's simply the love. Actually, um, I wanted to become a surgeon. I've always been obsessed with surgery. And uh, I also have some like doctors in the family and you know, we're surgeons and all of that. And I, I've always been uh, obsessed by that. So when I was a teenager, I even studied anatomy and uh, medicine, physiology for a couple of years. But then it turned out the music was calling my name and then I changed. And I think it's the best decision I made in my life because, um, yeah, it's, you know, look, for instance, uh, I don't know if I, uh, uh, you know, to give you an example, um, uh, you know, sometimes you have experiences where, you know, and, and, and then I go like, okay, maybe, you know, because I, I play, you know, the music I play is not music for the millions. I do have a great following, but of course, it's still a niche compared to pop music or rock or, or real commercial music. But, um, uh, but for me, the wealth lays somewhere else. For instance, um, um, quite some years ago, I went to Sri Lanka. Um, and this was like two months after the tsunami. 
and um, I played a concert there. Actually, I, I had a tour there all over the island, and it's, it's beautiful. And but then, and I thought it was going to be cancelled, but 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 they didn't. And then they asked me if I would be willing to go to the to an area which was really heavily hit by the tsunami, you know, and or, or displaced people who were living in tents and and all of that to play a concert there. And I, you know, and it was also kind of a fundraiser and all of that. So I went there and, you know, and it was like devastating the, the, the damage and the, tra the, the trauma on the people. It was, it was really, it was really hard to, to, to see that. And I played there, you know, and then the keyboard they provided, it was like, you know, like, like, uh, like my first Sony, you know, like a uh, couple of octaves, you know, really uh, yeah, shitty keyboard part of my language and then I thought well you know uh, but uh, you know but I played and the people were there and they were listening and then after the concert uh, this man walks up to me and he said to me um, you know I've got I want to share something with you I uh, three months ago um, I lost my wife and three children in the wave in the, the tsunami and uh, I saw them being washed away by the wave you know, and I, I survived because I could hold on to some branch or something like that. And he said, and thanks to your music, I haven't thought about it for 10 minutes. And then, you know, and I was, I mean, I, I was moved to tears, you know, I was, I mean, I was, it was, it was <laughs> and that was really, I mean, you know, this is not something you want to experience every day. It was, it was so, so uh, intense. And then I went back to the place where I slept, you know, and I, I I couldn't sleep from this. And then I realized like, you know, um, this thing what happened tonight, you know, means a zillion um, times more than uh, like a journalist uh, in an in a, in a elite newspaper in, uh, or a magazine, whatever, writing a great review. Th this is where it's all about, you know, that, 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 that I have the opportunity, the gift and the blessing to just be able to share my music and uh, that even for, you know, and it's not to, you know, I could never take away this man's trauma of losing his family, but just the fact that he shared it. And then it, I realized like, because, you know, you play a concert and, you know, and there are all these people are out there and sometimes people, of course, people come up to you and talk, but they don't always share their experiences. And then I really realized what, what I'm doing is such a, uh, I'm so grateful that I'm that I can do this to to and, and then I know again why I'm doing this for you know despite going to that that stage and in the heat and the and the trauma and, and the bad keyboard and all of that you know then I really realized like yeah this is uh, why I love to do this that's still my mission to just share my love for music with people all over the world um, I also worked for a cultural organization for 15 years and uh, they send me all over the world to do these collaborations with traditional music. That's also how my whole love for world music uh, or almost obsession started, you know. And I've done this in so many countries, like it could be in Kazakhstan or uh, like uncommon countries for us, like uh, uh, Mauritania or Bolivia, you name it. I've been to every corner of the world. And um, yeah, then... Um, and then also that, that they brought me to a little more challenging places like like Pakistan or Afghanistan where security is an issue. But then when you go there, you know, uh, it's all the same, you know, it's like ice cream. Everybody in the world, you know, people everywhere in the world, people love ice cream. And it's the same with music. And and, uh, and, and I mean, now I'm a little bit more careful when I'm invited to play in those countries, which are really kind of unsafe. But I did it for many years and you meet so many fantastic people and uh, yeah, and then I realized, well, you know, I'm, I'm doing the thing which really suits me, you know, n nothing else. And um, my, my, uh, my, fa my father-in-law, uh, he was a surgeon and he was actually uh, quite, he played like uh, piano for himself, you know, not at a high level, but he loved playing the piano. And he said to me, you know, look, it's great to be a surgeon, but after removing 25,000 appendixes, you know how it works. 
and with, with music, you, you know, and that, so, <laughs> and I thought, okay, so, uh, yeah, I'm, uh, uh, it's, it's just the love for music um, which uh, makes me do all of this. Lloyd, did we lose Mike, or is it me? No, we lost you. Mike is still speaking. <laughs> I'm here. Mike is still here speaking. Yeah. I think we, I think we lost you. Okay, I'm not heard. <laughs> Okay, I could uh, never repeat what me? I was saying before. <laughs> I hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Can yeah, you? he says he can hear you, Vox. Are you there, Vo- Vox? Oh, looks like. Oh, anyway, um, Mike, you've traveled 117 countries. Hundred and seventeen. We are not talking about seventeen or nine. Hundred and seventeen. That's huge. Yeah. That is that is truly huge. Yeah, I so, started. I counted them because people ask me how, how many countries you played, and then I I went to a country list and I counted them. And <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. That's a, that's a lot. That's a lot. So how 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 did you how did you get to to travel so much? Well. Um, there are two reasons. First of all, um, um, it has always been, you know, uh, my aim to see the world. You know, when I was a child. Um, already, just, I, I, just, just, just to mention, Mike. Sorry, I think we're gonna crash. I think we're gonna crash. Uh, Vox is having, is having connection issues, so I think we, he'll open exactly after we crash. But you can continue. Yeah, should we restart the room or what's what's? Yeah, he's gonna restart after after we crash, but you can continue speaking. All right, so then I know what's gonna. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, you know when I was um, during my time at the conservatory here, where I started, um, then I realized again, like, well, the music I love to play is um, is still a niche. It, it, it's a niche, and if I want to make a living playing the music I would love to play. Um, I should not only see the Netherlands as the place to work, but may, but the world. And that's the mindset I already had when I was like, well, already in my late teens, early, early 20s. So when you have that mindset, you start also acting in such a way that, that, you, that you reach the world. And one of the, the, I started, you know, collaborating with foreign musicians, uh, uh, you know, who brought me to their country. I invited them to to the Netherlands.